Welcome to Live in the Messiah's Love. I'm your host, Kamisha, and I'm so glad to be with you today. My beloved is here, and we are looking forward to getting into this episode of God's Warriors Advanced Individual Training. So before we get into the word, welcome, and let's open up in prayer. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you, and we exalt you in our eyes. And we cannot say thank you enough because everything that you've done for us already is more, (laughs) more than we deserve and more than we should naturally be entitled to. So we thank you for your provision. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy towards us and your unending kindness. Lord, we just invite you, Holy Spirit, to come in and minister your perfect will, minister to our hearts, and allow us to receive the engrafted word, the truth of your word, Lord, without hindrance, without delay, and without reservation. Lord, make the path straight for us. And as we receive your word, I thank you, Lord, for the freedom that's coming about in your people as a result and the strength that's coming to them as a result so that their prayers are more effective. Their confidence in you is increased, thereby strengthening their faith. And they are being more and more and more shaped and made into your image and likeness and effective in the things that you've called them to do, Lord. So we just praise you for that. We thank you for safe keeping for the listeners, our brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank you, Lord, that all their needs are met in your name, Christ Jesus, and that you do supply everything that's concerning them, Lord, and everything that you've called them to do, you're already preparing the way for them and providing what's needed to get the job done. So we just thank you for that. And we just thank you for your word being open to us so that we can receive from you, be ministered to by you and minister in return to you. And we thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus' almighty name, we pray. Amen. And Amen. All right. Welcome, my love. Thank you for being here. (laughs) Thank you for having me. (laughs) Absolutely. And welcome to everybody else. Looking forward to this episode, um, we have been talking about generational curses that do not exist. And we want to, in this episode, um, actually, we're going to look at an example of something that people might misconstrue as a generational curse. And, you know, like as I was ministering before the Lord and listening to what he had had for me to say and to teach and was looking, you know, for his guidance and direction, he said, nope, you're not done with this. Stop here and address this um, situation that you find in scripture and point out why it's different. This is not a generational curse, but it's something that might be misconstrued as one and even quoted or cited by those who are still you know, struggling with the concept of being free (laughs) in Christ Jesus, as, you know, strange as that might sound, that there are times where the adversary has set up a stronghold in someone's mind and in their life because their mom told them, their grandma told them, their dad told them, their sister and brother told them that something or other was true about the things of God. And they believed it, even though it was not the truth. And so now uprooting that, um, lie, let me just be honest and call it what it is, Absolutely. Um, that lie against the truth, uprooting it might take a little bit of effort. So that's why we look at the word of God, because God's word is truth, and it must be accurately understood and accurately applied to or, look at for what God actually said. We can just say it another way, rightly dividing the word. Hey, that's what the Lord calls it. Amen. And he told us to study. Amen. To show ourselves approved. And it's not so we can, I, I think many people have taken that prompting by the Lord to mean, let me impress you with the number of scriptures I've memorized, <laughs> but I have no application. That's not what God is talking about. He's not impressed by the memorization of scriptures because remember the adversary <laughs> mm-hmm. tried to come at the living word of God with <clears throat> the word of God, but it was twisted. It was tainted and thereby had no foundation, no standing, and it was corrupt. And the Lord answered with the proper application of the word. This is when he was tempted in the wilderness. Um, You can go and and look that up in the Gospels. The adversary literally tried to convince the living word, the word himself. (laughs) Who spoke the word. (laughs) And then there was. I mean, God himself, he tried to twist his own words to him. That's how corrupt the adversary is. However, the people of God... Um, Hosea 4, 6 says the people are destroyed. His people, God's people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. And it wasn't that they were lacking information. Sometimes it was because they rejected knowledge. 
um, that scripture goes on to say they rejected that knowledge. Knowledge that comes from the Lord. Amen. That's that was, not, not human knowledge. Or, we never are talking about right, carnal amen. wisdom as something to be gained or <clears throat> grasped at or to, to state value that clearly or trust. No, I listeners. thank you for saying that. I appreciate that, my love. But when you come here <laughs> to a day of prayer and live in the Messiah's love, and, we and never... this God's Warrior series, mm-hmm. and yes. We are never exalting wrongdoing. <laughs> We're never exalting the flesh or carnality or any of those things. We're only talking about the Word of God to be held on to, to be believed, to be... Um, a pearl, not just one one little pearl, but the pearl of great price. What's precious in your eyes is your covenant relationship with God. So during this time, this is how the Lord works through this process. He provides his word, and then he provides accurate understanding of his words. And then he goes to uproot those things that may have those seeds of words that may have been planted in the life of his people that are growing roots that will um, break up the foundation or cause his children to be less than their full purpose in him. So I love that about God. He is not a just patch over it kind of God. He's not a bubble gum and paper clip, tape it together kind of God. Mm-hmm. He uproots those things that would derail us, that would cause us to stumble. And he puts truth in its place. And he's so good, he's able to do those things simultaneously if we will allow him to finish his work in us. So we are not going to be destroyed. Amen. We will receive the knowledge of God in spirit and in truth and release our faith towards God so we can have his best. So we are going to look at something that occurred in the Old Testament with King David. And uh, we're going to go to 2 Samuel chapter 21, and then we're going to read verses 1 through 3, and then we're going to go back to Joshua chapter 9 and read verses 3 through 27. All right. Are we ready? We're ready. It says, now there was a famine in the days of David for three years, year after year, and David sought the presence of the Lord. And the Lord said, it is for Saul and his bloody house, because he put the Gibeonites to death. So the king called the Gibeonites and spoke to them. Now the Gibeonites were not of the sons of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. And the sons of Israel made a covenant with them, but Saul had sought to kill them in his zeal for the house of Israel. And Judah. Mm-hmm. Thus David said to the Gibeonites, What should I do for you? <clears throat> and how can I make atonement that you may bless the inheritance of the Lord? Okay. So, first blaring thing that I want to point out is David and Saul were not of the same line. Mm-hmm. Yes, they were related through Abraham, but by this point, they are different from different tribes and different households. So, Mm-hmm. David was not being punished for something that Saul did. However, when we um, enact certain things from a position that God Amen. gave us, sometimes it attaches itself to the land. And we're going to look at Joshua chapter 9 to see exactly what happened. And then we're going to go and look at what the Lord says about it. Okay? All right. So let's head over there to Joshua chapter 9, and we're going to read verses 3 through 27. So it says, when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and to Ai, they also acted craftily and sent out as, as set out as envoys and took worn out sacks on their donkeys and wineskins, worn out and torn and mended, and worn out, <clears throat> and patched sandals on their feet and worn out clothes on themselves. And all the bread of their provision was dry and had become crumbled. They went to Joshua, to the camp of Gilgal, at Gilgal, excuse me, and said to him and to the men of Israel, We have come from a far country. Now therefore, make a covenant with us. The men of Israel <clears throat> said to the Hivites, Perhaps you are living within our land. How then shall we make a covenant with you? But they said to Joshua, We are your servants. Then Joshua said to them, Who are you, and where do you come from? They said to him, Your servants have come from a very far country because of the fame of the Lord your God. For we have heard the report of him and all that he did in Egypt and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon, or Sihon, king of Heshbon, and to Og, king of Bashan, who was at Ashtaroth. 
<clears throat> so our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spoke to us, saying, Take provisions in your hand for the journey, and go to meet them, and say to them, We are your servants. Now then, make a covenant with us. This, our bread was warm when we took it for our provisions out of our houses on the day that we left to come to you. But now, behold, it is dry and has become crumbled. These wineskins, which were filled, were new. And behold, they are torn. And these are clothes and our sandals are worn out because of the very long journey. So the men of Israel took some of their provisions and did not ask for the counsel of the Lord. And Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them to let them live. And the leaders of the congregation swore an oath to them. It came about at the end of the days, uh, end of three, three days, excuse me, <clears throat> after they had made a covenant with them, that they heard that they were neighbors and that they were living within their land. Then the sons of Israel set out and came to their cities on the third day. Now their cities were Gibeon and Sephira and Beeroth and Kiriath Jirim. The sons of Israel did not strike them because the leaders of the congregation had sworn to them by the Lord God of Israel. And the whole congregation grumbled against the leaders. But all the leaders said to the whole congregation, We have sworn to them by the Lord, the God of Israel, and now we cannot touch them. This will we will do to them, even let them live, so that wrath will not be upon us for the oath which we swore to them. The leaders said to them, Let them live. So they became hewers of wood and drawers of water for the whole congregation, just as the leaders had spoken to them. Then Joshua called for them and spoke to them, saying, Why have you deceived us, saying we are very far from you, when you are living within our land? Now therefore you are cursed, and you shall never cease being slaves both hewers of wood and drawers of water for the house of my God. So they answered Joshua and said, Because it was certainly told your servants that the Lord your God had commanded his servant Moses to give you all of the land and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land before you. Therefore, we feared greatly for our lives because of you and have done this thing. Now behold, we are in your hands. Do as it seems good and right in your sight to do to us. Thus he did to them, and delivered them from the hands of the sons of Israel, and they did not kill them. But Joshua made them that day hewers of wood and drawers of water for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord to this day, in the place which he would choose. Okay, so some key points that we want to look at. First thing is verse 14 of this. Mm Mm-hmm. They looked with their eyes and they judged off of human knowledge and they swore an oath to God, which they enacted a spiritual law that they are governed by and they did not ask his counsel. So therefore they were deceived. Remember, we opened up talking about Hosea chapter four, verse six. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they rejected knowledge. Now, Joshua, of all people, knew better to inquire of the Lord before he made any decision. Absolutely. And let alone before they all took an oath that was against the land that God gave them and swore before God. Mm-hmm. Right? So But that, that was even the instruction of the Lord. Don't attach yourself to any of these people. Don't He told right? them clearly beforehand that they are all to be um killed with a sword. Wiped out, yep. It, the land is yours. Especially and The context of that, because we see that Rahab was spared Uh because of her faith and her willingness to cooperate with the Lord. But those who would not yield to the things of God and join themselves to Israel in the right and proper way, get rid of them. Right. That's what the Lord said. And here they thought, well, we're going to look with our eyes. We're going to listen with our natural ears and we're going to come to a decision. And because they were the leaders of the land, the land. They entered into a covenant that caused the land to be tied to it. Uh-huh. Because as you notice, when we read about um, what David was facing in Second Samuel chapter 21, it was a famine. The Absolutely. land wasn't producing like it was supposed to. 
So it meant rain was impacted, the ground was impacted, the seed and the fruit was oh, impacted. Oh. Whatever the the place in that line it was, the ground was the ground was not producing because they swore an oath. And because people forget about things and you know stuff of that nature doesn't mean that the land forgets. Well, the Lord sure doesn't forget. Right. And but, what were these two? What were this group connected to? Wood and water. And it wasn't that the Lord was bringing it back on them per se. It was that they enacted, they connected themselves to a spiritual law. Absolutely. And, and think about this. This sounds exactly like the Garden of Eden. Mm-hmm. Someone came in with words, right? And they presented themselves as convincing to get the people of God to forfeit something that belonged to so, them. So. And to disobey the rule of God. So the, the person, which you're talking of Satan. Mm-hmm. Using a serpent. Sowed mm-hmm. thorns and thistles, mm-hmm. and they reaped. And because the people did not complete their obligation mm-hmm. to seek counsel of the Lord before they made did anything and made any decisions, especially mm-hmm. a covenant, if you're covenanted to God, how can you enter into a covenant with someone else and you haven't asked him first? Um, so, you're an emissary, not, not the ruler. You've been appointed to guard and govern or to occupy, mm-hmm. and you still have to check with the ruler that you are serving. Amen. So again, that was about the land, not the people. Now it did put limitations on what the people could do because that was tied to the land. But the focus of this is about the land. Mm -hmm. So, so then Saul goes back, well, mm -hmm. and attempts to, well, as you were, you were phrasing it, stating it, go back on that, that oath, that covenant that, Mm -hmm. The leaders had sworn by. Mm-hmm. They'd sworn by God some concerning the land. Mm-hmm. And spiritual laws, whether you can see them or not, have to be respected. Don't violate them. Amen. Right? And again, that's where the knowledge of God comes in. Because the whole point of the written law, the law of Moses, was to highlight what was happening in the spiritual realm. And to also convey to us that we need a Savior. We can't possibly hope to memorize all these things. <laughs> Right. And even in the smallest things, whether it's intentional or unintentional, we were liable to violate something. So we need God to direct us for everything. We need him to correct us and we need him to protect us. We cannot be um, free agents in the sense of just out there doing our own thing and think we're going to have God's blessing because there's so much that we don't see and understand because our natural understanding is limited. But when we connect to our covenant with Jesus Christ and our Lord and Savior and our Father in heaven to understand his ways, now we become skillful. Second Corinthians 2.11 tells us not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. Amen. This is clearly what happened here. This is clearly what happened in the garden. Satan came in and deceived, right? And then it was only after the fact, after they, they conceived something in their heart and they confessed it with their mouth that this was the case, that now, and now they're ensnared to it, and the mm-hmm. land is ensnared to it, and the people are responsible for being good stewards of the land, right? Now there's a connection where someone has a claim to the land that God gave them. Mm-hmm. When they shouldn't, that's not what God desired. So certain oaths and actions bring the land or the country or the city into play in the spiritual realm because they connect to spiritual laws and the land itself becomes tied to it. Now let's go look at what Jesus said. Let's go look over in Matthew chapter five, verse 33 through 37. So we can get his perspective on this. All right. You ready? Mm -hmm. It says it was said, whoever sends his wife away, let him give her. Are you in Matthew chapter five, honey? Correct. Verses 33. Oh, uh, sorry. That was 31. Sorry. <laughs> Again. So this is Matthew five thirty three. Okay. Again, you have heard the ancients were told you shall not make false vows, but shall fulfill your vows to the Lord. But I say to you, make no oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God or by the earth, for it is the footstool of his feet or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you make an oath by your head. For you cannot make one hair white or black, but let your statement be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything beyond these is of evil. Okay. And my translation says, but let your yes be yes, 
and your no, no, for whatever is more than these is from the evil one. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying here, the, the, the duplicate of the yes, yes, and the no, no is in your heart, this is what it is. And mm -hmm. this is what you let come out of your mouth. You're of one mind and you're in agreement because the adversary is looking to trap you. He's looking to steal, kill, and destroy. So if you have gotten counsel from the Lord, don't make any decisions without him. Let your answer be just that. You don't need to go into swearing because it makes you accountable for things that you can't always um, hold the consequence, right? Like just mm -hmm. like the famine in the land. The, count, the consequence of that oath that was made by those leaders and by Joshua uh, uh, concerning the land was more than the land or the people could bear to deal with because mm -hmm. it brought famine to the entire land, just like when the people begin to enact sin on a broad scale throughout the land. It brings, it enacts a spiritual law where the Lord said, if you walk with me and you do what I ask you to do, I will keep that hedge of protection around you. But if you break it down with your sin, I'm not going to step in on that. And I'm going to try to bring you back. But there becomes a point where you have crossed over that grace. And now the consequence of your sin is coming your way. That's not God's fault. That's not mm -hmm. God doing that. That is the people making a decision. And now they're facing the consequences of their actions. So let's look at James chapter five as well. And we'll look at verse 12. All right. He says, but above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath. But your yes is to be yes, and your no, no, so that you may not fall under judgment. Amen. So as we look at what we're saying with our mouth, remember that you are brought, bought with a price, and there is more attached to you than you may know of. There's um, just like Adam, for example. I don't really think he had full sway or understanding that he held the whole lease on the earth and that by his decision to disobey God concerning one piece of fruit, one nibble of one piece of fruit hmm. was going to impact all of humanity. It was going to impact the literal earth itself. It was going to um, allow sin to run rampant through the earth. Through every, if you will, generation. Mm -hmm. With the exception of our Lord and Savior, Amen. everyone would be impacted by it. I don't think woman understood that because she would Correct. have said, no, of course I'm not going to do that. I don't want my children to be harmed or to even be pervy to what sin is because <clears throat> knowing about sin doesn't bless anybody's <laughs> life. It doesn't help anyone. But knowing God absolutely does. So, Or, or to have pain in childbirth. Just, just, just that alone. Simple, I'm sure she wanted to take that back. <laughs> <laughs> that simple thing, and it looks like small things, but you cannot determine what the scope of it's going to mm -hmm. be. I don't think Cain thought him allowing himself to be unbridledly angered was going to lead to all that it led to with him. Mm -hmm. The loss of him killing his brother and then being forever, you know, um, subject to being that, that spiritual law that says what you sow, you're also going to reap. Right. He didn't think it was going to look like it did. So that's why God says, keep your mouth, guard your guard your mouth. And he's also prompting us in these two scriptures to be people of integrity. Don't say what you don't mean. Don't swear oaths or make a promise to do something, period. Because, but, oh, go but ahead. as we say often in this ministry, say what the Lord says to say and do what the Lord says to do. Exactly. Nothing more, nothing less. Exactly, because that's perfect. Amen. There's nothing left to be desired. Every need is met, and that's not needed. If we just stand on what God has already put in place for us. That was us. exactly what was said um, in verse 14 of Joshua, right? They did not consult the Lord, right? So they did not ask the Lord what they were to say and or do concerning the matter. Mm-hmm. And... As we went forward in that uh, particular section of scripture, there were some other points that I wanted to uh, stop by as well. Uh, let me just get back to there, that section. I do apologize. Um, we talked about the rulers, and because they swore an oath rather than consulting the Lord. Um, so now everybody had to lose a little bit of ground in that regard. 
Um, now, Joshua does call them cursed in verse 23, but he didn't have the right, except, I mean, to say, like, this is your job, but they willingly accepted that job. They weren't, they weren't upset about, about that. It was about or, self-preservation. Right. So they, they came there with that, whatever they tell us we're going to do. Um, but it wasn't like Joshua was saying, you're forever cursed and held in this way, because you see it later times, they don't, they revolt and do all these other mm-hmm. things. Um, but who is held accountable is the land itself. Um, and the people who came into that oath mm-hmm. and, or who, who, who agreed and mm-hmm. made an oath mm-hmm. against, again, against the counsel of the Lord, which he had already given them about not joining themselves to the people of the land, to the people of the land. And again, it wasn't about ethnicity or any of that other stuff, nationality. It was simply the fact of they worshiped idols and what does the idol um, or the temple of demons or the table of demons or any of that have to do with people of God and the mm-hmm. temple of God. They cannot intermix. Do you have something you want to say, honey? No, no, just I was agreeing with you. You cannot drink of the, the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons mm-hmm. at the same time. Right, because we have see... no business together. Right, because Rahab was one of them. And we started off in Ezekiel where the Lord talks about what their, their mm-hmm. root actually was, their genetic root actually was. <laughs> exactly. Um, so... He was just saying, don't join yourself to those that because um, idols and witchcraft and idolatry and so demonic they, influence. So they would because, not be steered away from the Lord. Exactly. Because outside of God, there's nothing good. And I mean that both in position and uh, regarding relationship. So the parents of these, um, the Amorites there taught their children to be woodcutters and water gatherers because that was now their employment. But it wasn't like they were forever held to that because Joshua said, now you're cursed for doing this. That's not what the Lord said. (laughs) And we already see that God is always doing good for his people. And anyone who will reach out to believe him, he is offering them good. And he is going out of his way to look for ways to connect us to the blessing. Um, So something. And even that, even that. You have to ask the question, did they ask the Lord for his counsel concerning that? Mm-hmm. Or was that something that... Him speaking out of like, anger exactly. or frustration because he was duped and deceived. But they weren't held to that, and they only stayed in it as long as they Correct. they wanted to. They could have left at any point and, you know, been well on their way, right? Absolutely. Okay. Um, so, big takeaway this is not a generational curse, right? And be mindful of what you say. Um, Especially when you get in certain positions. Mm-hmm. That's why, or even the Lord said this, right? He said it concerning teachers, but as those in leadership and authority, right? He says, mm-hmm. do not desire that many of you should be teachers as you're held to a higher standard. And, and we see the impact that uh, someone acting in unrighteousness mm-hmm. and just not going and seeking the Lord for his counsel mm-hmm. as to what to say and what to do. Mm-hmm. We see the impact or the fruit of that. And just the example that we've gone over here in this episode. Mm-hmm. And remember a big point for us as people of God, it's what brings curse into someone's life or the consequence of sin is that they're taught wickedness. They're taught to sin against the Lord. We, we covered that in Jeremiah where the kids were getting the, bringing the sticks. The mm-hmm. woman was baking the cake and the father was kindling the fire. The parents are the ones who inspired that in their kids and taught them to commit that sin. Thereby that, and that child agreed to it, whether ignorant or not. And that joined them to the curse. And there is also in the connotation of Jeremiah, because there's accountability, there was some knowledge and awareness in that child to agree with it. So God is the righteous judge. And he can say when someone is accountable and when they're not, um, and our emotions and things have zero to do with that. It's the righteous judge who decides and, um, teaching children, teaching generations, teaching neighbors to do sin is what links them to it and then they pass it down but it's not god saying your parents sin so now i'm going to get you that's absolutely incorrect um but the truth is god gives us an opportunity to decide what we're going to sow and he says choose life so that you and your children will live Mm -hmm. you'll teach them how to live 
and access the blessing rather than teaching them how to access the curse that comes with sin. Amen. Go now, ahead. we are being raised up, trained up by the Lord mm -hmm. to be his warriors. The Lord's warriors, especially those for his end time army, which is who we are. Mm -hmm. and, and you that are listening and being trained up are included in this. Mm -hmm. We are to know the heart of the Lord. Amen. And it's our responsibility that, and our privilege. Exactly. As his elite warriors. Mm -hmm. God's warriors know his heart and go and do what he has commanded them to do to bring that about here on the earth as it is in heaven. Amen. So lack of knowledge and unwillingness to receive the knowledge of God or lack of the knowledge of God in spiritual things and the unwillingness to receive the knowledge of God and the truth when it comes causes us to be destroyed. Right. But, that's, but that's... for the, his warriors that know his <laughs> heart, they're there to break the chains. It's not that Amen. we're doing it, it's the Lord doing it. Right? He breaks the chains. He frees those in bondage from the yokes, from the everything that would hold them back or keep them captive. He sets. He already set the captives free, and mm -hmm. there are those that have attempted to remain yeah, or to unknowingly, walk. out of ignorance, we and have, have been put in captivity. Of, but right. we, as God's warriors, are here to help set the captives free. Amen. But to set someone else free, we got to go free ourselves. Amen. Right. And the doors have been opened in full. That's right. The doors have been opened by Christ. We have to choose to walk out of that prison and then to walk out of that building into daylight and to continue and walk further and further with the Lord and not allow ignorance of Satan's devices to destroy what God is seeking and desires to build. That's where our strength comes from is clinging to the Lord Amen. and re refusing sin because sin causes destruction, right? The thief comes for no other purpose than to steal, kill, and destroy. But Christ came that we would have life and life more abundantly. That statement, life more abundantly, inherently includes absolute freedom. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us today. Um, please take some time and look over these scriptures, spend time with the Holy Spirit and let him minister to your heart and let the love of God be shed abroad in your heart anew and fresh so that you see exactly what he has for you and you're able to make this personal for you. And if you've already been free, get even more free and then share that freedom, the truth of the freedom of God's word with someone else. We're looking forward to connecting with you on the next episode. Thank you so much for being with us. We love you. God bless you. And remember to live your life in the Messiah's love.